Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to start talking about PID control. For this series, we are going to be using one of our Compact Logics PLC trainers. This is actually the one that we just added the analog to a few videos back. And the reason for that is eventually we're going to move that analog to this PID trainer. But for now, we're going to leave it on the base unit. And then we're going to be using this PID trainer, which is not actually one of our products. This is from Mark over at Industrial Concepts, and I'll put a link to it down in the description. This is actually a series that we're working on together. And the more I work with this PID trainer, the more I like all the thought that he has put into it. So in this video, we're mainly going to talk about one, what are our expectations? Um, what do we hope to learn with this? And a little bit about how we're going to interface between the two of them. First, I just want to give a quick overview of this PID trainer here. And we'll just start down here. It has, first it has this valve on the side of it here, which we're going to use a lot as far as simulating variations in processes, but we can close the valve. And we can open the valve back up. And then it actually has a manual speed control here, which is tied in with our voltage command. So right now I am sending 10 volt from our Compact Logics PLC, but I have this cranked all the way down and this allows some really interesting variability that we're gonna talk about in it. Then at the top, it has this valve. And when I close this valve right here, you're gonna see some more variability. So it has a lot of interesting variability in it. And finally, probably my favorite thing is on the bottom of this, if I can get them out without tipping this thing over, it has these plugs right here. And you can change the entire process by pulling one of these out. So actually before I pull that out, Right now we're running, oh, we're at about six inches. So now I'm gonna pull one of these plugs out. And now all of a sudden it's gonna be at eight inches. So there's a ton of different lessons here that you can learn about making your PIDs robust. Also, there is, you can see the signal here coming from the PLC. It doesn't have this in the loop. And then we have our ball height. So if we run this all the way up, this goes high. And as we run it down, which we can also see the ball coming down, it's gonna come on down. So there's a whole lot of good things that we can learn with this PID trainer. And that's why Mark over at Industrial Concepts and I decided to work together on this. So now let's talk a little about the wiring interface because it took very little to interface it with our setup. So over here is all the wiring to it. And really, you jumper all of the minuses together. We have our analog prox minus jumpered to our analog fan control minus which is then jumpered to our damper close minus, which is then jumpered to our damper open minus. And then we have one single wire coming over to our right set of terminals, which is our zero volt. Now, if you wanted to have this completely separate, it does have its own power supply built in. We're not actually using it. And then we're going to have damper open and damper closed. These two wires here are going to go to discrete outputs on our Compact Logix PLC. And we have them wired to number eight and number nine. The only additional wire that you'll need on your PLC right now will be our field power. Our FP Plus still does go to this left terminal block, which is our plus 24 volt and our FP minus goes to the right one, which is our zero volt. And finally, we're gonna have two more wires here, and that's gonna be our analog plus from our prox, which is our level sensor that lets us know where the ball is up and down. And we're gonna have our analog plus fan control, which is gonna be our command to the fan in here. And those are gonna go over to our analog modules here. And this one is a voltage input module, and this is a voltage output. That's the two we are gonna use. 
And our analog Prox Plus is going to analog input zero. And our fan speed command is coming from analog output zero. And that's all it's gonna to take to interface these two trainers. That's why this was such a natural fit. Now I wanna go through a little bit of what we're actually gonna be talking about in this series, because I've witnessed a lot of PID teaching methods that are definitely like drinking from a fire hose. And I wanna to try to break it off into small chunks. And so first we're gonna start really building our case for the PID. In other words, right now I'm running it in manual. I'm gonna bring it up to four. Why isn't that good enough? Why can't I just manually do that? Or say this was a tank, because in most of our lessons, we are gonna imagine this being a water tank. Why can't I just run it up to eight, wait till it drops down to four, kick it on again, and just run it up and down with on off control? Why doesn't proportional control work? And then why did we add integral? And why was that not perfect either? And what is this derivative? So we're, that's what we're gonna go through. We're gonna talk about manual control. What is wrong with, you know, seeing that, okay, I'm a little low here. Let me just crank this up a little bit and walk away and do a few other things. And oh, now I'm a little high and drop it back down. Why is that not acceptable? And then we're gonna go through on off control where, you know, we kick it on at a level, go off, on, off, on, off which actually is perfectly fine for many applications. But then instead of going through the magical PID equations, we're going to go through them one step at a time. We're gonna start off doing a proportional control exercise. So what exactly does work about proportional? Is it ever okay? And what is the problem with it? Which mainly is you'll usually have a steady state error. Then we're gonna talk about how integral helps fix that steady state error, but it does have a long path to get there. Then finally, we will talk about the PID and how using those three things together, you can get these nice graphs. We're also gonna talk about how to do some auto tuning, uh, how to do some manual tuning, uh, feed forward clamping and the need for clamping, also manual mode and why it is so important that we make manual modes in PID setups. And then while we are doing the base of this series with the Compact Logics and Studio 5000, we're also going to show you how to do it in Connected Components Workbench with the Micro 800 PLCs and in RS Logics 500 with the Micro Logics PLCs. And finally, probably the one that most people watching my channel are most interested in is how do we troubleshoot these? Because really, once a PID is tuned, I mean, yeah, systems do age, they may need retuned, but I see too many people out there, they're like, hey, the PID's messed up on that, will you go tune it? Well, no, there's probably something wrong with it. So we're gonna go through, you know, how can we figure out why it's doing what it's doing compared to what it used to do? Lots of good content coming. If you can't tell, I'm really excited about this series. It's something that we've been working on for a while now. So make sure you're subscribed and hit the little bell thingy. That way you get notifications. Hit the like button on this video. And yes, as questions come up in this series, be sure to put them in the comments because we have planned out about 15 videos for this series, but your questions and comments will steer this series as it goes. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.